only one. The heart of the entertainment world. The Hollywood Palace. With your host, Milton Berle. Tonight, Steve Allen. Irving Vincent. The Newman Cossack. Heinz, Heinz, and Dan. Martha Ray. Tommy Stevens. The Young Blonde. We'll return to the Hollywood Palace after a word from one of our sponsors. Most people know that orange-flavored Tang is the energy breakfast drink, has a rich, natural taste, even more vitamin C than orange juice, and it's wholesome, always been made with natural sugars, no cyclamates, no artificial sweeteners. Good reasons why everyone should start the day with a glass of Tang. Fact is, Tang was chosen to go to the moon with the Apollo astronauts. Tang, as nourishing here on Earth as in outer space. They won't leave until they get dessert. You forgot to thaw the new cool and creamy pudding. Bird's Eye didn't freeze cool and creamy for convenience, but for flavor better than the best home cooked. It's ready, Mary. It thaws into chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch flavored pudding so delicious they're too good to be pudding. And they keep two weeks in your refrigerator. New cool and creamy from Bird's Eye. Worth waiting for because it's too good to be pudding. And now, here is your host, one of America's great entertainers, Milton Burroughs. Make him laugh, make him laugh. Don't you know the whole world wants to laugh? <laughs> said be an actor my son but be a comical one they'll be standing in lines for those old honky tonk monkey shines oh you could study shakespeare and be quite elite and you can charm the critics if you don't want to eat but slip on a banana and the world's at your feet make them laugh make them laugh make them laugh Grandpa said, go tell him a joke, but give it plenty of hope. <laughs> hey, the air is good up here. Yeah, great. Let's, let's go back to Earth and tell him that this planet will sustain life. We can start colonizing immediately. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> make them roar, make them scream. Take a fall, hit a wall, spit a scene. the best and fly to entertain you as their personal guest but don't forget you're still a bum unless you're well dressed <laughs> mrs noakes the wallpapering is done mrs noakes mrs noakes where are you what do you think, dum dum? Break 
got any nude pictures of your wife? Certainly not. Want to buy some? <laughs> Martha, Steve, and Connie, also Heinz, Heinz, and Dad. The following proceedings will be madder than mad. I'm sure we've got the recipe to make you feel glad. Make them laugh. Make them laugh. Thank you and good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hollywood Palace, also known as Take the Money and Run. <laughs> I'm very, very, we've got a good audience here tonight. Everybody look at this lady in the, will you pull down your skirt, please? <laughs> I haven't seen Snuggies in years. <laughs> How do you do, sir? How are you? How's, how's the family? Glad to see Actually, I don't feel much like working tonight. I got some bad news. That uncle just died, left me a hamburger stand in Watts. <laughs> Called Whitey's. But this, uh... <laughs> but I must say, I'm very, very glad to be here tonight because I just returned from Mexico. I was making an appearance there. I was there during the Keo Pecte Festival. And I want you to know... <laughs> I had a very big run. And I want you to know... Oh, what's the use of me telling you any more jokes? Because if I've told them, you've heard them. So, uh, <laughs> let's uh, get on with our bombastic Diosa Costello Poopy Campo review. <laughs> May I present, is there an animal act in the show? <laughs> May I present, ladies and gentlemen, the first big surprise tonight on the Hollywood Palace, and I want you to give them a warm reception. This is their first appearance, and may I say, three of the most dynamic entertainers that ever had the pleasure of presenting. I want a warm reception, ladies and gentlemen, for Heinz, Heinz, and Dad. Let's go. I'm singing in the rain. I'm singing in the rain. We're singing in the rain. Just singing in the rain, what a glorious feeling. We're happy again, we're laughing at clouds, so dark of a phone. The sun's in our hearts, and we're ready for love. Let the storm the clouds shake, come on, come on, everybody from the play. Come on, come on, now come on with the rain, I have a smile on my face. We walk down the lane, we're happy. I'm happy because we're dancing in the rain. We're happy we're together in the rain. I did the rain. Children talk about rain. Oh, my Lord. I did the dance. I did the dance. I did the dance. Oh, my Lord. I did the rain. Yeah, 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 yeah
along with cool filter lawns, the only extra length cigarettes with the taste of extra coolness. Fine rich tobacco's cool zone white filter plus extra coolness too. Come join the throng smoke cool filter lawns, it's time to come up to cool. That's that's what you think. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I must interrupt tonight because there is a gentleman is appearing backstage right now who I must introduce to you. As you know, there are many, many people in show business, many actors getting mixed up in politics. And this is of great interest, ladies and gentlemen, and some concern, I believe, to all of us, especially in show business. This gentleman is a very distinguished political figure who can help us understand what they're doing back there in Washington. So please welcome this very, very great political figure, the very honorable Senator Philip Buster, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Senator, I am sure that our viewers would like to get your thinking on some of the trends that are happening in Washington. <laughs> now, for instance, what do you think of entertainers running for office? I personally think we got enough comedians in Congress already. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they agree with me, but that's what I think. Very, very funny, Senator. I, I'd steal it from you, but I already stole it from Bob Hope. <laughs> and Senator, if you don't approve of actors in show business yeah. uh, being in, in politics, do you think our present crop of congressmen are any good? Are they any good? Are you kidding? They're the best money can buy. <laughs> Have you been reading the papers? Well, uh, Senator, yeah. what's... Uh... <laughs> We're saying... <laughs> Senator, what is wrong? What's wrong with actors? In politics, let me put it to you on a personal basis, Mr. Yeah. Burrell. How would you like it if we had people like, oh, say, uh, Tiny Tim running things in Washington? Well, what's wrong with that? Just this. Politicians are supposed to kiss babies, not marry them. <laughs> well, Tiny Tim doesn't have time for top politics. His wife just gave birth to a 10-pound ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, yes. I have a question. Let's get down to the real issues, Certainly. such as uh, uh, such as Cuba. Cuba yes. Do you think, Senator, we'd ever be able to trust Fidel Castro? Personally, I never even trusted Desi Arnaz. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, who knew what he had in, in those thick heels of his? <laughs> but be that as it may, Mr. Burrell, and I have no reason to be sure that it was, I want to tell you that I have recently, my friends, traveled the length and the breadth of this country of ours, and I'm glad to be able to report this evening that the length of it is okay, but the breadth of it is really murder. <laughs> Especially among you people that drink a lot. <laughs> but I want to tell you, Mr. Burl, that I have traveled all over this world, and I have found more true Americanism in this nation than anywhere else on Earth. Here, here, here. <laughs> Certainly here. Where do you think? Over there? Uh, Senator, yes. you're over here, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> Senator, your work, I'd like you to tell the audience, your work with the youth of our country is very, very well known. Yes. When you meet teenagers face to face, what do you usually, uh, I would like to say, what do they usually say to you? Stick them up. <laughs> I wonder how many children you have. I often wonder about that myself. <laughs> Side, Mr. Burrell. I'm glad to be able to tell you I'm the proud father of 18 children. 18 children? <laughs> 18 children? You don't mean it. Well, a couple of times I did. No, no! Now, no. <laughs> please, Senator, please, in conclusion, yes. can you tell us the names of these 18 children? Well, it's a tall order, but I'll be glad to take correct. Here they go. Peter, Paul, Mounds, uh, <laughs> Lynch, Pierce, Fender, Dean, Smith, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Ringo, Niles, Larry, Curly, and Moe. Well, haven't you done a wonderful job in naming them all? Well, not that great. Six of them are girls, but that's a good 
Incidentally, Senator, where is your wife right now? Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Burrell, at this very moment, I'm glad to be able to tell you, sir, that she's on her way to the hospital again. You see, we're going to have still another baby. You don't mean you're letting her go to the hospital by herself. You listen, buddy. If she can't find a way to that joint by now, she ain't never going to make it. You know? <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the happiest moment for myself in the show. I want to introduce to you a girl who is a great, courageous lady who has made many, many trips to entertain in many hospitals and battle areas. And through the sad and tragic things that she has seen, she still has remained warm and generous. Ladies and gentlemen, a great comedian and one of the greatest entertainers we have in the world today, Miss Martha Ray, ladies and gentlemen. Let's a wonder start believing in you. Let him hold out his hand. Let him kiss you and watch what. because my wash is as fresh and clean as all outdoors. I'm glad, because now Mary doesn't care how dirty I get. I'm glad, because even stains wash out. Glad? My wife's delighted. It's new Fab, the only detergent with lemon fresh and borax and active enzymes to remove stains. They're always doing something good to Fab, it's true. Oh, Fab, 
We're glad they put active enzyme room and fresh and Clorox in you. Ultra Bright toothpaste, a taste you can really feel. Ultra Bright gives your mouth sex appeal. An Ultra Bright smile is a healthy smile because regular brushing with Ultra Bright means the freshest breath, the brightest teeth. Helps prevent cavities, too. Ultra Bright gives your mouth sex appeal. For a healthy smile, get Ultra Bright, the sex appeal toothpaste. Break it up. Break it up. Separate. Oh, boy, separate. Why don't you separate? <laughs> My father's a doctor. <laughs> Hello, John. Vicky, my darling. I thought I'd come down and see my husband busy at work. <laughs> There's a hair on your lapel. And another one on your shoulder. Why, there's hair all over your coat. I know. I know, John. You've got someone hiding in that closet. Uh, Vicky, please, do me a favor. Don't open that door. Please don't. I will. I will. I'll put a stop to your philandering once and for all. <laughs> How do you like that? My best friend. I don't forget. Check each prisoner carefully. And if they have any metal on them, a bell will ring as they pass you. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay, hand it over. Hand what over? Come on, you heard the bell ring. You must have something metal on you. Now, hand it over. <laughs> okay, buddy, hand over the weapon. Okay, hand over the knife or gun. I don't have no knife or gun. You must have something metal on you. Now, let's see it. Uh, do I have to? Yes, let's see it. Okay, for God's sake. <laughs> well, that, that's the truth. I got Slappy White sitting in the audience. Let's hear it for Slappy White. Stand up, take a bow. Put the camera on Slappy White. Fine. Okay, sit down. He... He's done a few commercials himself. And, you know, I can't understand some of these commercials. They got one commercial on the air where you see this cowboy you know, riding on a horse, and he's surrounded by 500 cows, and he says, come to where the flavor is. <laughs> I would, oh, we're on. I didn't know. <laughs> now that we're on, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our next star on the Hollywood Palace. She's sweet. She's pert. She's petite. She's one of the great talents. You've seen her on the television shows so many times. You've seen her in motion pictures. She's a darling of a gal and a great entertainer. I want a warm reception, ladies and gentlemen, for Miss Connie Stevens. It's great to be fancy free. It's great to be young. Right on the old merry-go-round. Whatever the option is, whatever the choice, just keep your two feet on the ground. We can roll a wheelbarrow through streets broad and narrow, long as you know where you've been. You see, my friends, it all depends on the moon. Whee! Whee! Never met someone who makes me feel the way that you do. It's all right. Whenever I'm asked who makes my dreams real, I say that you do. Out of sight, so be my oh, one. Look out, people, because here we come. We're bringing you a love so true, so get ready. Go 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, don't leave the room, you ladies and gentlemen watching, for one moment. Please don't leave for one minute or you're going to miss the station break. <laughs> To really appreciate our cigar, you have to smoke their cigar. Take a puff on their cigar. Then take a puff on a white owl. Try this cigar test on us. Send your name, address, and name of any other comparably priced cigar to White Owl, Box 40, New York, New York. And we'll send you one of theirs, one of ours. White Owl, ours. So I think we can look forward to the rest of the weekend being clear and warm. And don't be alarmed by the sight of these clouds, because I'm sure that they'll blow away. I was... <laughs> oh, these are terrific. You must be. Maybe a little... Can you get... Oh, oh wait. Come on. Oh, oh. Ah. Okay. They're perfect. I'll take them. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello, dear. It's my husband. Where are you, dear? Oh. He's at the club. Oh, you're playing cards. Oh. He's playing cards. With whom? Oh. He says he's playing cards with you. <laughs> now our next uh, great act, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see in the palace, I think they're sensation. There's presently a new group. They're really rocking them in the charts. I want a warm reception for the hottest group that we have today in show business, the Young Bloods. Let's hear it. <laughs> Just one key unlocks the 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present now one of the most exciting dance acts ever seen on the Hollywood Palace. Direct from the steps of the Ukraine, we bring you the Cuban Cossacks. Let's hear it. <laughs>
Behind this door lurks trouble for kitchen floors. Black heel mark trouble. It's the kid. What's tougher than the kid? Hard gloss glow coat. Whoa! It shields against black heel marks. Just about all of them. Glow coat takes pounding and keeps on shining. See? Hard gloss glow coat. It's tougher than the kid. It shields against black heel marks. Week after week after week, a woman polishes her furniture so that in a few months' time, she's put on this much polish and ends up polishing the polish instead of the furniture. But not so with new self-cleaning Favor. Favor cuts through old polish and dirt. Now, if Favor can clean up this mess, it'll take care of any build-up problem you have and give you a fresh wax shine each time you dust. So clear up your build-up problems. Try new Favor with lemon wax. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I have been in show business now about three years. <laughs> I've been in every kind of show business. Radio, motion pictures, television, nightclubs, crystal sets. <laughs> but there's one thing that I never appeared in. This is the truth. That's burlesque. And I'm sorry for that. I really am. And tonight, we're going to sort of remedy that. Tonight, we'd like to present one of the classic burlesque scenes. It's called the courtroom. Join me, please. Well, how do you do? Hello there. You the other attorney, I believe. Yes. yes. I'm I'm Clogger, Harvard, twenty nine. I'm Grabber, Vassar, thirty two. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a girls' school. I didn't ask questions. I just had fun. The <laughs> court is now open. Attorney? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go right here, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Now, uh, what, what is the first case on the socket? Now, that's docket, Your Honor. It might be docket to you, but it's socket to me. <laughs> you have no right to hit me, Your Honor. Who has? I got a right to Well, we'll have order. Order! How about a scotch and soda? I don't mind if I do. <laughs> What's the charge? Well, Your Honor, this case concerns two men who claim to be the father of the same child. Two men claiming to be the father of the same child? That's right, sir. That's a switch. <laughs> All right, on with the case. Bring in the witness. Your Honor. <laughs> And you are the uh, father, sir? I am not the father. I am the mother. That's right, Your Honor. She's the mother, and that's the baby. Oh, I see. Well, that's why I want to get this case over with as fast as I can, because I don't want to keep the child up too late. You see, the baby's got to go home and get a bottle, because if she don't get a proper rest, she gets up in the morning and she's very cranky. So before we go any further, I'd get a load of the size of that kid. <laughs> Are you sure this is the right case? Yes, Your Honor, this is the right case. All right, who's your first witness? Your Honor, my first witness is standing right before you. This gorgeous-looking woman. Yeah. Her name is Lita Starchies. Miss Lita Starchies, take the chair. <laughs> hey, where are you? Well, he just, he Why just, are you going with the chair? He just told me to take the chair, didn't you? Oh, put it back and sit <laughs> Now, Miss. Now, Miss Thornton. So just in case you can. Now, let's get this case straight now, once and for all. My, my client here, Lita Storchies, is it true? Is it true? This uh, witness here, is it true that you met my client on the Albany night boat? Is that true? Wait just a moment, Your Honor. May I make a motion? Go ahead. <laughs> Never hurts. Now we'll have order. Order. How about a scotch and soda? I don't mind if I do. Okay. <laughs> All right, come on now, please. Wait a minute, Your Honor. You forgot the soda. <laughs> Oh. Now let's, please, please, that's a 
continue, please. Let's continue. Now, Miss Starchies, what happened on the Albany night boat? Well, as soon as we boarded the boat, yeah. we headed for the poop deck. Here, 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 here. What's the matter with you, lady? I'll wash your mouth out with whiskey. You'll have no profanity in this car because the kid's sitting here. If you insist on saying these dirty words, you know how kids pick things up. These things fall on our little ears, and before you know it, you see. Are you sure it is the right case? <laughs> yes, Your Honor, this is the right case. Now, may I explain something to you, Your Honor? My client, this lady here, Lita Star Cheese. You see, you misunderstood her. The poop deck is the upper deck. The poop deck is the upper, the upper deck. Yes, now, upper deck. continue, Miss Star Cheese. Well, as soon as we got to the poop deck, yeah. we started to perambulate. <laughs> <laughs> we started perambulating. You admit that? <laughs> you admit you were perambulating on a poop deck? Yeah. Three days at an electric chair. Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, we gotta be in the back up here. Your Honor, may I say this, please, in pleading my case? You don't understand. I'll explain it so that even anyone as stupid as you should understand what I mean. That uh, last remark, did that do me any good? It was highly derogatory. Oh, it was? Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Your Honor, may I explain something? Perambulating means walking up and down. And anyway, Your Honor, that's why my client claims to be the father of that baby. That's it? Yes, sir, that's it. That's it? I said it up. I am not going to say any more. One word from this woman <laughs> can clear up this whole case. But will she talk? Will she talk? No! <laughs> what, uh, what, what is that? What are you hitting the courthouse? Was that bothering you? No. Keep your hands to yourself. Uh, that's government property. Well, I was only making a point. I'll make a point on your head. <laughs> that's the other one. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you again. Proceed. <laughs> Prosued? No, no, I demand that you listen to my client's case. I demand it. Oh, what are you, you hitting the courthouse now, too? Yeah. You better watch it, boy. <laughs> May I just say this? Please. This darling woman here sits here with a secret buried within her. But will she talk? Will she talk? No! <laughs> I said, don't fool around. I warned you once. I'm not going to tell you again. Well, I ate the five, I nail them before this is over. <laughs> Your Honor, I want you to gaze at this poor little innocent baby over here. I'm glad you said that. Sure. Because I look, took a look at the kid when she first came in here. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say... Are you sure it is the right case? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Should that child go permitted to go through life with, with a veil over her head, I say no. No. <laughs> Boy, go ahead. You're asking for it, Charlie. Go ahead. I'll spot you the first two shots. Come on. You look like an ad for a baking powder. <laughs> Your Honor, should that innocent little child be deprived of my client's love, I say no. No. Around here. Is there any way 
way to end this case. <laughs> Miss Starchies, I think I have a way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Away. <laughs> I have a way of ending this case. And this case, ladies and gentlemen, I have to end it once and for all. Why not let this little child tell her court who her real father is? Yeah, after all, she's a baby. That's right. And a baby has a, a natural instinct. That's, right. That's true. Let's have this poor little child toddle over there to confront these two men. <laughs> is that all right, sweetheart? Just toddle over there and tell the court who her father is. That's a good idea. Little baby, stand up. <laughs> Little baby. Are you sure it is the right case? <laughs> yes, Your Honor, it is. Little baby, we are here to see that justice is meted out in the legal, juicy prudence of this court. No, no, the Jewish prudence. In the legal, Jewish prudence of this court. Jewish prudence. <laughs> Little baby, we don't care who wins here today. All we can say is, may the better participant emerge trumpet. <laughs> uh, please get on with it, please. Little baby, I would like to say that our God-given right in these United States is freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of the press. This is the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is your land, my land. This is the land that I love. <laughs> God bless our <laughs> Your Honor, listen, I, I really get carried away. Right? <laughs> and I'm not even a citizen. <laughs> Your Honor, please, let's get this over with. Little baby, I want you to walk over to these two men gaze down deep into the soles of these two heels, turn around and tell a court who your rightful father is. You may proceed. <laughs> Baby. Baby. Daddy! <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. McCormick, did you get your dentures Polydent clean this morning? Look, Polydent may be the best way to clean my dentures, but the way I'm rushed most mornings, I just have to settle for less. Now there's a fast-working Polydent tablet, new Polydent Green. Polydent Green? Why green? Green shows speed, speed you'll see as powerful green cleaning bubbles work safely to wipe out tough denture stain, embarrassing denture odor, fast. Fast-working denture tablet? How fast? In just minutes, the green is gone. That means stain and odor are gone. Thorough cleaning right before your eyes. No other tablet cleans better or faster than new Polydent Green. Hey, the best way to clean dentures is a fast way, too. New Polydent Green. That's about, that's about it here at the Hollywood Palace. You've been a very, very wonderful audience. And on behalf of the cast, may we wish you a very, very happy Thanksgiving. We uh, had our turkey tonight. <laughs> I'd like to leave you with this one thought, ladies and gentlemen. There's just one place for me, and that's near. It's been a pleasure once again. Before we all begin to run out of jokes, I'd like to quote Bugs Bunny. D -d That's all, folks. Thank you. Thank you.
singularity. Were you born that way, or is your system different? Some people think normal means daily regularity, but doctors say normal is what's normal for you. That's why Xlax doesn't try to prevent irregularity. It just helps you toward your normal regularity, the way your system is. However, age has changed it. Try chocolate at Xlax, or now unflavored pills. Apollo 11 paved the way. Apollo 12 took the second step. This is Jules Bergman. Astronauts Pete Conrad and Alan Bean in two extended moonwalks have explored the moon, left behind five major experiments to send scientific data back to Earth and collected samples of the lunar surface. Their historic work on the moon will help unmask some of the mysteries of creation. But their Apollo 12 mission is not over until they and astronaut Dick Gordon are safely on the recovery carrier. You're still looking mighty fine here. Uh, you're clear for landing. Complete coverage through Splashdown in the Pacific is brought to you by ABC News. Follow the second step, the flight of Apollo 12, another dramatic chapter in man's conquest of space.